I just introduced a new academic planner in my shop and I have a lot of details in the description for the planner but sometimes it's easier just to see a quick walkthrough and see some of the features in action. So that's what I'm going to do for you here today. So in this video I'm going to start with just kind of a really quick walkthrough overview and then I'll take some time to dive a little deeper into each feature or section. So first, the uh, files that you'll receive are first the uh, planner itself, which is a PDF file, a PDF file of alternate covers. So um, this is a separate file you load and you can choose any of the covers to use. I'll link to a separate video where I walk through how to use alternate covers. And then uh, you'll also get the sticker book, which works in GoodNotes. And if you choose to use this in an app other than GoodNotes, I've also included a regular zip file that has PNG images for every sticker that you see in the sticker book. So those are individual image files with transparent backgrounds um, that you could easily insert into any other app such as Notability. So I've really created this in a way that you have this nice sticker book feature if you're a GoodNotes user, um, but it's also really useful if you're using it in an app outside of GoodNotes. So that's an overview of the files you'll receive Within the planner itself, uh, there are a few main areas. Uh, one is the sections. So um, you have both sections and blank pages. And um, high level, what to know here is that sections um, lead you to section divider pages. I'll show you what one of those look like. So here's your section divider page for the you know section number one or the blue section and um, it's basically it acts as a bookmark for you to build out um, a selection of pages and the section dividers are also accessible here in the top menu bar these colorful dots here lead to the section dividers and the, the colors coordinate. So um, the idea of sections then with having these uh, dots above the, the page on every page of the planner is that you can easily jump to sections no matter where you are in the planner. And then the blank pages just lead to individual pages. You can see you have some grid, dotted, lined, and blank. And so these are just single pages that you might use for something like a running list or to keep important information. Um, and so that's how you would use the blank pages. Jumping forward beyond the table of contents, I also have a whole large selection of bonus pages. The idea here is um, really the easiest way to add new pages to a planner and preserve all of the navigation you have here along the top and side is to have the page actually included in the planner itself and then duplicate them as you want to use them. So that's the idea behind me having such an extensive selection of bonus pages here. You can see anything from basic planning, like weekly planning, um, bucket list goals, visions, uh, and then forward to trackers and organization, like habit trackers or managing key dates or passwords. I have a whole section on financial organization, especially if you're a student, this can be really important as you're thinking about loans and managing side jobs. Then I have your student planning and organization, which is a whole selection that I've created just for this planner. And um, I'll, I'll go through all of these in more details if you want to see the individual layouts. The, the final piece then is also class notes. Um, you have blank, dotted, grid, and lined options, just depending on how you like to take your notes. Moving into the next section then, um, we have the My Classes. This is something that I built out just for this planner. Um, again, keeping it high level here, you can build out your schedule really visual here. I have some special stickers included for schedule blocking. So you can build out a visual schedule here. And then you'd write each name of each of your classes um, on, on these lines and, and basically designate, um, designate one of these boxes per class. And then each class has a dedicated page, one, to track basic information on the class. And the other dedicated page is an assignment and grade tracker. 
And so I designed this section just to give you the ability to track all of the important information you have to manage as a student directly within this planner and make it super easy to do so by having the linking and having it, the structure all built out for you to record this information per class. So I already covered then that these top dots here correspond with those sections. So then moving forward, just to kind of get through the speed overview, we go into our dated pages. Um, now with this planner, I've included daily pages, which I'm really excited about. Um, makes it as easy as possible for you to plan um, at, at whatever level you like to, if it's just monthly and weekly, or if you like to plan daily, that's now an option here in this planner. So you're at your year, year at a glance here. If I tap on any of these, it's going to take me to the month. Within the month, I'm going to be able to tap at the front here in the shaded box, and it's going to take me to the weekly page. And then the weekly layout here, if I tap on any of the days, it's going to take me to that dated daily page. One other way to get to your data daily page within the month, I've even included the hyperlinks here on the day. So if I tap here on the one, it's going to take me to the daily page. So I've really tried to make it as easy as possible to jump to where you need to go. One other note on these dated pages, you can see on every dated page, you have a kind of an open area that I've included dots in. A lot of people just leave it as it is and take notes there, but I've also included a whole set of um, what I call like widget content uh, stickers so that you can change your layout to match any way you want to plan or any focus areas you have. So uh, here on the month, that area that you can customize is right on the right. On the week, it's right along the footer. And then I showed you on the day, it's right along the right side. So let's jump into the sticker set here and I'll show you what some of those content widgets look like. So we're here in the sticker book. You can see, again, if you're a GoodNotes user, this is a nice little bonus. I've created this sticker book um, to be really flexible so that you can actually use it as a basis for building your own sticker collection. I've organized them here, uh, but you can always, I've made these customizable. They're just text boxes. So um, you can grab any of these and edit them and kind of designate the sections as you want to. And on every page of the sticker book, you have the quick jump to jump to any of the sections as you've designated them. So I was just mentioning to you when we were looking at the dated pages, um, kind of the what I call the layout widgets. So this is an example of the ones that you have per month. You can make a checkbox, a dotted, a grid, and these are habit trackers. Then for your week, these are overlay stickers. Um, when we jump into the more detailed portion of this, I'll, I'll show how, how these look and how they work. And so these just overlay over your entire week to kind of take each day column and make it a little more you know, useful or easier for you to fill in the way, um, the way you want to use it. Again, this is another overlay sticker. This is going back to kind of a like traditional uh, lesson planning view, um, but as students, you may want to use this sticker to track per class. So you would write each name of the class and track through that way. So these are your footers for the weeks. So you can see um, meal planning, workouts, wellness, um, an opportunity to prepare and reflect on your week, habits, priorities, and then these are your dailies, uh, adding a grid. You can have more of a health focus with your mindset, your fitness, and your nutrition. And then this one's more of an achievement focus, gratitude, intention, accomplishments, and opportunities. These are just, this is aligned. And these are again, those, those um, large sticker images. This is a grid, this is dotted. So the idea here is you could take any blank page and add this sticker on top um, to add kind of that background to it. Um, running quickly through the rest of these then, you have all of your icons, um, some labels. I've given you the ability to kind of create your own stickers here. You can see I've added one of these words on top of one of these labels. And so the opportunities to customize here are kind of infinite. 
And then you have some monthly stickers and some number stickers as well. These are your uh, month at a glance views and so each of these are separate stickers and you can imagine you know in a in a weekly layout you might put one of these in the footer if you like to be able to quickly glance and see where you are in the month and then you get into some of your trackers so bill payment habit trackers it's just basic checkbox and then um, water tracker and these are just some fun labels uh, then some notes, so you can add these anywhere and just write on them. Uh, these are sticky notes. You may not be able to see on the video, but they have a little shadow and a slight paper texture, which is um, fun for just using them to draw attention uh, throughout the planner. And then these are just some other basic notes. These are frames, so getting a little more decorative here, if you put a picture in your planner, um, these actually are transparent, you can see, so you could set that over the sticker just to add a fun little decoration. Um, and same with the Polaroids, you could set the, the uh, image on top just to kind of give it a little more dimension on your page. These are some um, custom stickers that go with those alternate covers so that you can add an alternate cover and decorate it a little bit with the text or um, kind of these composition uh, planners. And then this is a piece specifically for um, this academic planner uh, where it includes some more uh, student focused stickers so you can see you have some subject labels, um, some little reminders where you can write in your assignments, and then just some labels that are more student specific. And um, our last set of stickers here in the book, these are transparent. These are what I mentioned are helpful for schedule blocking. And um, so they have kind of this transparent background here and you can resize them as needed in your planner. So the final thing I'll show you uh, is a, another little bonus that I added in here for just some more detailed planning. Uh, and it's kind of the final component of our dated pages. So if I go here to July and just jump into a week, when you are on a weekly spread, you'll see this little star icon appear in um, your top bar. And that takes you to a detailed planning page. So again, you have one of these focused planning pages for each week of your year. And um, it just gives you an ability to reflect on your last week, set an attention for the un upcoming week, and really think through some goals and actions. Um, I've included this because this has been really pivotal for me in, in planning and being effective in my life and um, the ability to kind of make that as easy as possible for all of you in the planner um, was something I wanted to be able to help with. So those are here on the, uh, on the weekly pages, again, here on a weekly page and you can choose to use them or not they're they're in the planner for you um, and they're easily hyperlinked so that you can do that um, at the start of every week so that's your high level overview of this planner um, what i'll do now is just jump in a little more detail to each section give you some ideas of how you might use it and just get a little deeper into the features of the planner so the first section i want to go a little more in depth with when we jump into our planner is the table of contents. So again, this is kind of the first icon at the top here. I mentioned to you generally, you know, the difference between sections and pages, but just to um, get a little more detailed here with how you might use one versus the other. Sections are more for collections of pages. So they're kind of like bookmarks um, that are just easily accessible through these dots here. And, it, and the bookmark leads you to the section divider page. So you can see that right here. And if I just open up our page viewer, you can see there's one dedicated page per section. And so what I would do is I would designate a section for anything that I want to build out a collection of pages around. So for example, you might think about designating each section for a specific class, and you might put all of your notes for that class after the divider um, that you've designated for that class. So I'll go back here. Then the difference I mentioned to you 
that you have blank pages, the blank pages, when you designate a page and you, you tap on it, it takes you to that one single page. So you might use a blank page more so for a running list that you're building over the year or just storing some important information. Anything that would really just live on one page, you designate a page for that. Um, if you're building a collection of pages, designate a section for that. So I'll also link below this video if you're kind of confused on how to build out a section, how to actually duplicate pages, um, I, I do have a video walking you through those steps. So next we'll walk through the bonus pages here. Now I mentioned a little bit about why I've included these bonus pages. I really just think it's the easiest way to uh, bring new layouts into your planner, having them in here kind of from the get-go. Now, you do have other options to bring new pages into the planner. I have another video for that around um, how to import new pages using insert pages, and I'll also link to that one um, in the description for this video. But what I'll do quickly is just kind of run through um, a a quick glance of all of the bonus pages. I'll I'll go to where that section starts and we'll flip through together. Um, again, I won't I won't get too detailed on these, but I think it's just nice to uh, see the layouts so that you can get a feel for what they are and and what would be available to you in this planner. So this one's just a kind of a different layout of a weekly view. Um, you can see it's more of the boxes arranged here. And then this is again another weekly view. So if you chose to use one of these views, all you would do is duplicate it and add it right after your weekly dated linked page. So then if you wanted to get back to it later, you just jump to the week through all of the kind of embedded navigation and then swipe right and you know there would be um, your, your custom planning view that you've chosen. Moving on here, this is more of a schedule view. Again, some people like to plan more um, looking at a schedule. The thing that I actually use these for is building out what my ideal week looks like. So that's another use to keep in mind for these, even if you don't use it week to week. This is monthly planning. This is very similar to the weekly planning page I showed you, but just in case you'd rather just do this on a monthly basis, um, you could use this monthly page rather than using the embedded weekly pages. So again, just a tip when you're using a planning template like this, I usually recommend that you would just duplicate this and place it right after your monthly dated page and then you know you're always just a quick swipe away from the extra planning page that you've added in. This page is all around uh, kind of identifying your vision for where you want to go. Um, often when I'm using this page I kind of designate hey one year in the future, two years in the future, and then um, what you'll do here is you're just kind of brainstorming out what you want each area of your life to look like, what changes needed to get there, and the actions you can take. I usually find that these short-term actions then translate into my goals. And so once you've identified your goals, for each goal you can use this goal planner. Just write out my goal here and, and get crystal clear on what it is I'm trying to do. Think about a deadline, what's my motivation, what's my accountability, and is there some sort of reward that I can look forward to? Um, these are really your motivational factors. And then getting into the center of the page here, you would start listing out some of your action steps and target dates, and you could check them off as you go. So um, I find this really helpful, again, when I'm just kind of trying to distill what I'm looking to do, and then these action steps are what's going to actually be showing up in my day-to-day -day planning. This is a year at a glance view. Um, you could use this just to write details in, or a lot of people use this to kind of capture some quick memories or some quick pictures um, from each month of the year. So there are a lot of different ways that you might use these. And then your yearly overview. Um, this one is a nice way to, at a glance, just kind of um, flag different maybe blocks of time in your year. Um, you can also use this as more of like a habit tracker. Um, again, this one's really open-ended. 
and then meals. Um, this is the meal planning option that I typically use. It allows you to just generically list out a few things for breakfast and lunch and then get a little more detailed with your dinner planning. But I've also included this more detailed meal planner if you like to get really focused and list out your breakfast, lunch, and dinner for each day of the week. This key date layout allows you to write the date here um, and write the event. This can be really great for building out a list of birthdays um, or important events throughout your year. The password organizer, and now make sure that you've you know, password locked um, your iPad if you're gonna use this. Um, what I typically do is I don't actually write the password in, I write more of like a, a hint for my password, something that I would know. Um, so be cognizant of that when you're using this, but um, I know we all have a million passwords floating around in our head, so it's nice to be able to organize all those logins in one place. This is your bucket list template. So you could choose to designate this just by a season or maybe it's a really high level bucket list for your life, but um, it it's kind of gives you some fun prompts of what to think about when you're building out a bucket list. You have your things to do, places to visit, people to see, things to make, things to read, and things to learn. Um, so again, this is another nice one to use when you're thinking about your vision, your future, your planning. Um, I like using this bucket list template. I have a couple habit tracker options in here. This one is monthly, so you would write all of your various habits that you're looking to foster here, and then you check them off as you go uh, throughout each day of the month. And this habit tracker is more of an annual focus if you wanna track throughout the entire year. You write your habit, your motivation and reward, and then you just check off um, through each day of each month of the year. And then um, this starts getting into some basic notes. So this is just a basic note template. This is a two column view. Again, this is just really generic and allows you to use it for um, whatever need you might have. This one is similar to the year at a glance, but I've just taken out the labels for you so you could designate each box however you wish. And then again, um, my idea here with this one is these are just some generic columns. In case one of the trackers or templates that you'd like to use isn't included in the planner, you could kind of create it yourself here by adding in a header and labeling each column with the information you want to record in it. I have an undated assignment tracker, um, kind of unlinked, like the other ones were linked to my classes. These are unlinked, this assignment tracker is, and so you can just um, choose to use this if you had another use beyond the linked ones for your classes. And then uh, this one is actually more of your um, student-focused schedule planning view. So this is the view that I provide to teachers for lesson planning. But I've seen a lot of students use it um, just to keep track of what they have going by um, week, by class or subject. So I already started showing this on, on this page, those subject stickers that are included in your sticker book. Um, you can actually, they fit perfectly right in this box. And so you can see I just place it here and I can build out my view here. So again, just another optional view that you may choose to use as a student. This is a reading list, and um, when you think about what you do in like Goodreads, this is um, kind of gives you the ability to do that here in your planner. So you write the title and author, some quick notes about the book, when you read it, and you can give it a star review. So this is a template that I would imagine you kind of duplicating and over time building out a list of all of the books that you've read. An essay planner, again, this is another student-specific one, gives you the ability to write the prompt and some basic information, and then as you go, as you're reading, you can fill out um, what your introduction, body, and conclusion is with your references. So again, just a nice little formatted template as you're planning out things like essays. 
Now this project planner, um, this was another one that I had a fun time creating because I'm actually a project planner in my professional job and um, I'm a project manager. So uh, built this out. Obviously this would be a little bit lighter. I'm thinking as a student what you might need to think through for completing a project. So write down your project and some basic information along with the description of the project. And then at the beginning, you can think about what are my major milestones so that I'm not scrambling at the last minute, um, what do those really look like, and then take those milestones and distill them into actual to-dos with due dates and notes. So again, just another nice template to help you get a little bit of organization and um, really help, help you put some of um, this organization you need to have as a student into a template so that you don't have to think about it as much. And then this is the one I mentioned where it's just your unlinked class information page. So this is just in addition to that one that um, I showed you through my classes that's linked for each class. This is just a completely unlinked open version in case you have another use for it. And this is getting into your class notes. So for the class notes, you have the topic and class, date, time, and then um, you have your ability to take notes and each version gives you kind of a different note taking area. So this is your line notes if you prefer to write on lines. And then um, the idea of really effective note taking is then kind of stepping back at the end of the lecture or the class and thinking about, okay, what would be a quick bullet pointed summary of what I learned? Um, and also you can summarize some points or you can summarize some next steps or actions that you have coming out of the class right here in this template. So same template, this just gives you a grid if you prefer to write that way. This gives you a dot view. And then this is just open um, in case you just prefer to take more open notes. You also have a to-do list that's formatted in six boxes. My idea here is that you might want to create lists centered around specific subjects or topics or classes uh, so that you can kind of work on one thing at a time and not have it all merging into a, one list. So I've included this as more of a student template, but honestly, um, I could see this pertaining to a lot of different uses. And then you have your finance tracker. So here's a bill payment tracker to track and make sure that you're paying your bills monthly. A monthly budget, um, whether you're using this to actually track by month or just using this to create an ideal budget. Um, that's probably more so how I would use it. I know I personally tend to use Mint or apps that kind of do the work for me, but I would definitely use this view um, to create kind of my ideal budget. This is a finance progress tracker. If you have some big goals of paying off debt, um, you're able to set those and track them here. Again, just a really helpful view as you go throughout the year. And this is your debt payment tracker. Um, again, same idea with paying off debt. And then this is a general expense tracker. Specifically, if you have um, a need to be reimbursed by things, this can be a really helpful one. And then we get into just your blank pages. So these have a lot of uses, um, whether it's just note taking or um, using them to create new layouts. So I do have blank pages here in the planner for you. And you have your grid, your lined, your dotted, and your blank page. So let's jump back. I just flipped through all of those, but just a reminder, they're all organized here for you, and so you could jump quickly to the page that you want, and um, just from there, you could duplicate it and insert it in. And if you're new to GoodNotes and still learning the whole kind of duplicate and organization of pages, I do have another video for that, as I mentioned, and that's linked below. So your My Classes section, I already mentioned that this is new to the planner. I'm really excited about it. And uh, where I'll start here is that you have your schedule view. And I know it can be helpful just when you're planning in the beginning of the semester to be able to think about really what your week is typically going to look like, what your class schedule looks like. And so you can do that right here. So I really like using the overlay stickers for this. You could of course just write in um, to that schedule view that I gave you, but I like adding the color so that you can show like by topic or by class. 
So I would tap here, I would paste this in and um, just resize it to fit the area that you're looking to fill. And extend it here. And so you could see whether it's, you know, a two hour or, you know, one and a half, you can extend it as needed. <clears throat> and then you'd place it and then right on top of there, you know, I can either write or type what the class is. And I could easily copy and paste this. on the other days of the week. And so then you could go grab another color for another class or another topic and kind of continue to build it out that way. And I, so I think these stickers are really helpful for this view and I've also started using them on some of my main planning views too. Um, I just really like the way that the transparency doesn't take over the layout. Um, it just gives you an easy ability to um, create kind of some visual blocking without completely taking over the layout. So you block out your classes here, and then I already showed you that each of these are, are linked, so your basic information for your class you can record here, and um, your assignments as well. And so you just write the name of your class here, and uh, you're able to record some basic information on your school and your contact. So it's a pretty simple page, it's a simple layout, um, but again hopefully it helps you just kind of stay more organized as a student and have all of that information that maybe you're receiving on papers from teachers or syllabuses be able to quickly um, put it all into the assignment page um, or just kind of your basic student information page and have it all at your fingertips right on the planner here. So I already gave you a pretty good overview of the different pages that you have for planning, the dated pages. Just to review, you have this year at a glance, which links to your monthly pages. Then you have your monthly pages, which link to both your daily and your weekly pages. So let's jump to the week. On your weekly pages, you have the ability to jump into your weekly detailed planning. Again, just an optional layout if that's something you want to use. And then you also have the ability to jump right into your daily page. So um, you can get to your, week, your, your monthly spreads from your yearly spread. You can get into your daily and weekly spreads from the monthly spread. And then from the weekly spread, you can get to your daily spread and your weekly detailed planning spread. So I've tried to make it really easy to navigate to the page that you need. Um, and then you of course have these monthly hyperlinks along the right side of the page that take you to your, uh, your monthly spread. And then just a side note here, I have included a basic information page that covers some of the navigation, gives you a link to these YouTube videos, and um, basic information on the stickers, and the hex codes and the font that I use in this planner. So that's just hidden down here on the bottom right, just in case it's something you want to refer back to. But going back to your dated pages, I did want to show you um, just some of the different uh, widget stickers that I have in action so that you can see how that works. So let's jump back as you recall in the sticker book. If I just tap on the section uh, circle here, it'll take me back to that section. So the blue is all of my different widget stickers. So I'm gonna grab here uh, this list. So all I do is draw anywhere on top of it, tap and hold and then I have the ability to copy it. And that's the nice thing about having these all saved, already cropped for you in a sticker book, is just how easy and quick they are to use. Um, and then the other nice thing about having a sticker book is I have the ability to size them for you, and um, when you're inserting an image, sometimes GoodNotes will resize it, but when you're taking it from the sticker book, it does not. So 
usually you don't even have to resize these to get them to fit the way that you'd like to see them. So you can see I just copied that over and I added it there and it's right there. Um, now these do not have a transparent background. They have a white background so that they cover up whatever was behind it. Um, that's the only reason for that. I've actually added in a white box on the image. So uh, this is covering up those lines and it's giving me this nice checkbox here. So for the month, I could add these dots, I could add this grid, or I could add these habit trackers if you like to track your habits directly on the monthly view. Now jumping into the week, I'll tap right here to jump to my week. And this is where I have both overlay stickers and footer stickers. So you have a lot of options for how you build out your weekly spreads. I'll show you an example of one of these overlay stickers. So I jump in and again, this has a transparent background. So if I just place it over, it kind of takes a second to get these in place. They're a little tricky. Um, I place this here. You can see now I have schedule blocking and kind of a quick bullet point list on every day of the week. Uh, so similarly, you know, I could add the water tracker just kind of along the bottom here. I could add, this is just kind of like to make a bullet point list in your day. And then I could add, I'll actually show you this one as well. Um, this is more of your lesson planning view that as a student you might use just to take notes by day on your classes. Um, to organize your notes and your planning around classes. This one always takes a second to kind of get positioned correctly, but you can see then it just kind of takes over the day there. So those are some of your basic overlay stickers, and then you also have all these options for the footer. So whether you want to, um, you know, track or plan for your meals, your workouts, your wellness. Um, this one I like, it's just kind of a basic um, two column list and a notes area. Um, preparation and reflection here, if you want to do that more on a week to week basis, but you don't wanna use those bonus layouts or a habit tracker and, and some priority setting. So if we, take, if we take this one as an example, I'm going to copy this, I'm going to jump over here, and I'm going to place it right in my footer. And again, you can see I'm not having to resize this, which is really nice, and um, it's right there for me. So I'll just give you another example here. I could also add in this bullet point view. And I might add in my water tracker here as well. For some reason, it looks like I need to resize this just a little bit, and you can see that that's actually, it's easy to resize it as well. So you can imagine how many different combinations you might have. I'm often adding to these little widget views, um, and I, I always appreciate um, other ideas for uh, other layouts that you want to be able to add in. The idea here is you don't have to go hunting for the perfect planner with the perfect layout. Everyone just has such different preferences. You can get this basic planner and add in some of the widgets um, that you want to use. So then moving forward, I also have a few of these now that I have the addition of the daily pages here, um, a grid and um, some of the intention setting ones that give you the ability to customize your daily view. So 
Your daily view already gives you some really nice planning options for setting your priorities for the day and recording a few tasks. Usually I find that my priorities are like the subtasks that it's going to take me to get to my goals usually become my priorities for the day. And then tasks are kind of a level lower and sometimes they're just more tactical, like you know, dropping off the dry cleaning or things like that. I always reserve my top priorities for the things that um, are really going to move me forward in my life, whether um, they're things that I need to do for uh, my professional job or personal goals I have, I make those my priorities. And then my schedule view, I really like to block out my schedule. I typically actually do this at the beginning of my day um, or the night before, just depending on what my day looks like. I'll sit down and I'll just map out how I'm going to use my time based on the things that I've already recorded that I need to fit into my day. So getting back to these widgets then, um, one that I've really liked to use um, recently has kind of just been this like overall uh, mindset health one. And so it gives me the ability to think about um, both kind of my mental and spiritual health and my physical health all in one view. So if I tap and hold, again, it's sized well for me. And I'm just gonna drop it right here. And you can see then I can really set my mindset and my intention for the day. I can record um, what I'm doing for my physical fitness. Uh, I can record what I am planning to or already have eaten for my meals, uh, water intake, and some quick notes as well. So that's really my overview of the dated pages. Um, I, I've really liked using a daily view, which I actually um, never have done before, but it's been um, really helpful to me in uh, achieving the goals that I have. And then I also mentioned, you know, this bonus weekly planning view has also been super important for me in being able to think holistically about my week. A lot of people do choose to do this more on a month to month basis, but I find I have enough to kind of improve on and make progress on by reflecting week to week. And then it gives me the ability to continually get better um, versus just having these larger events like every quarter or every month. So I hope you've enjoyed the walkthrough of this planner. If you have any questions on it, I'm always happy to answer them. If you have any suggestions for things that you wish I included, I also love to hear those as well. Um, and, and any questions, feel free to message me on here or through my shop. Thanks for watching.